Hello guys, today I will demonstrate you our new filament example with three big things. Multiple panels, multi-tenancy and rows and permissions all in one. This is based on an example project that I found on Upwork just to make some demo. And I thought that filament is great for this case. So this is the main thing. So adding sales and cash transfers and returns. So managing the store basically. And then for admin area, admin dashboard with store level reporting. So that led me to the idea of regular panel admin panel filament and separate super admin panel for reporting and managing users and stores. So that's why multiple panels. And of course, multiple stores means multi-tenancy. But multi-tenancy will be enabled only in regular panel, not for super admin. You will see it all in this video step by step. And we published the source of that project. So if you want the full source, this will be an overview, still very valuable, I hope. But I will skip on some features. And if you want the full access, this is on filamentexamples.com. If you purchase the membership, then you will get access to all of those projects on GitHub. Now let's dive into this multi-tenant and multiple panel project. First, a quick demonstration of admin and super admin panels. In the database, I have store one and store two users and then admin. So let's log in with user for store one, but it also that user has access to store ID two. So in the store user, I have this. So I will also show you multi-tenancy. So this is the dashboard for store one with some numbers, some table, and quick action for create forms. Then on the left, there's multi-tenancy between two shops, two tenants, two stores, and then each of them has resources, filament resources for some numbers, sales, sales returns, and others. So this is what store user would see. Then if I sign out and then go to the URL of slash super admin, then I can log in with this admin user. And then the dashboard would look differently. Some numbers are the same and we'll talk about that in the code. And then on the dashboard, the super admin user may choose a specific store to be returned with their numbers only. And on the left side, only two menu items, stores and users, which are not visible for regular store users. That's why it makes sense to have even separate panels because the resources are completely different. So super admin may manage stores and may manage users and assign stores to them and assign roles. So this is the quick overview. Now let's dive into the code, how it's all structured. First, a quick glance at the docs. How can you create such multiple panels in the docs, in the panels configuration, you may read this. So there's default admin panel slash admin, but then you can create more with this make filament panel app. And then depending on this name, it will create this name panel provider, and then you will be able to create the resources in a subfolder for that. Now let's dive into the code. So in the code, as I mentioned, there are two panel providers, the default admin panel provider and super admin. So what's inside that super admin panel provider? First, different paths everywhere. So filament super admin for pages, for resources, then ID and path is different. So you may specify different things. For example, registration would be allowed in admin panel, but not super admin and vice versa. Then you can configure widgets, which we did, and I will talk about that in a minute. And then also auth middleware, who can access that panel. So if we go inside that role middleware, we are inside of spidey Laravel permission package, which is exactly what is used here in this project for roles and permissions. So this is the syntax for super admin panel provider. And if we go to admin panel provider, there's just auth middleware, there's no checking for roles. Now, since we're talking about spidey Laravel permission, let's take a look at that setup. In the database, we have this roles, admin store user, then permissions, typical permissions for policies for all the resources. So five permissions for every resource, you would say, then role has permission, who can have access to what, which role, and then model has role, which user has which roles, which in the database structure may be multiple roles. Now, where does it all come from? One of the Cedar files in that project is called roles and permissions Cedar. And it looks like this. We have resources, we have actions, and then we have for each with another for each inside using permission from spidey package to find or create nothing really fancy, but this is how the data got seeded for roles and permissions. And then for the user, we have user factory admin with assigning role and then assigning another role to a different user and then attaching stores 
for multi-tenancy. We'll get to that in a minute. I want to finish the thought on multiple panels first. So in the file tree, you can see app filament admin and then resources for admin users panel and then separately app filament super admin and two resources for that super admin panel. So you would understand how it is separated in terms of file structure. And you may think that there would be code duplication here. So if same resource is managed in both panels, and yes, if you have the case that the same resource would be accessible to both roles to both users, then there may be code duplication with resources. In our case, this is precisely the case for multiple panels because as I mentioned before, the resources are totally different. If you have one or more resources the same, then it's debatable whether to create multiple panels or play with rows and permissions within the same panel. Sometimes it still makes sense to have some duplication of the code for a few resources, which then eventually may be not that identical as you was expecting, but it depends on scenario, of course. In this case, where we do have reusability, and you already saw that partially, in the widgets. So admin panel has quick actions, stats overview, and recent sales widgets and super admin has sales per store chart, which isn't present, but those two stats overview and recent sales are overlapping. So this is where in the widgets, for example, you can go to stats overview and see filament tenant, which may or may not be present in the queries for that widget. And this is where we're getting to our second topic, multi-tenancy. So in the database, we have store user, for example, user ID belonging to a few stores, which appear here on the left. You've seen that already. Now in the code, if we take a look at the same widget, for example, there's a set of functions to get the numbers and one of the parameters is tenant. So at each point within multi-tenancy, there's only one tenant to be active. So they chose whether they want to see this shop or that shop data, not multiple stores at the time, except for super admin. And this is in the widget. We have tenant with question mark, which may be not existing. And then in the function, for example, get today's total sales, we have a query. And then we have when when tenant exists, then we query by that tenant. Otherwise, it means it's a super admin user and then they show the combined data. So this is how you can combine multi-tenancy and multiple panels in the widgets with when conditions and getting the current filament tenant ID. Then to enable that tenancy in the admin panel provider, you provide this tenant by store with tenant menu. From there, it's a similar setup how it is written in the official filament doc. So you provide the tenant and then in the user model, you provide a few functions to access the tenants. So here's my user model and inside we have can access tenants and get tenants with stores. In our case, store is the tenant. So yeah, that's the overview of the structure. If you want the full code, this is inside of filamentexamples.com membership. So this is the first on the list, the newest 73rd project. So by purchasing membership, you get the GitHub access to all of them. And then what you would find inside, what I didn't mention and didn't show in this video is how to, for example, get those quick actions on the dashboard. Or for example, in the CRUD resource of sales, there's relation manager to, for example, sales items here at the bottom and how does it all work. So you will find a lot of details, which I didn't explain in this video. But generally, what do you think about this setup? Multi-tenancy, multiple panels and roles with spotty permission. Would you have structured it the same or in a different way? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.